John, how are you? Hello, everybody. Yesterday, Secretary Azar announced a bold new initiative to require drug makers to disclose the prices to consumers, and it's going to be something, I think, very special. You may have heard about it, maybe not, but it's the beginning of a uh, plan of transparency, and I think uh, it will have quite an impact. So, thank you very much. That was a job well done. Everybody so. Thank you all for being here as we address one of the biggest concerns Americans have about health care. Uh, the Republican Party, I have to say this, is really very much becoming the party of health care. You see what we're doing. We're determined to end surprise medical billing for American patients, and that's happening right now. I want to thank Secretary Acosta, Secretary Azar, and everybody else in the room for joining us, some people with some incredible stories. Thanks also to Senators Lamar Alexander, Maggie Hassan, Bill Cassidy, John Barrasso, and Representatives Kevin Brady, Devin Nunes, and Greg Walden. Thank you all very much. Thank you. My administration has already taken decisive action to make health care more affordable for American families. We've vastly expanded lower-cost health insurance plans. That's happening, and it's been an incredible success. We've begun a bold initiative to reduce the price of prescription drugs. And last year, drug prices saw their first decline in 46 years. First time in 46 years that drug prices have gone down, and now they're going to be going down a long way further, including the fact that we may allow states to buy drugs in other countries if we can buy them for a lesser price, substantially less price. And that's going to be very unique, but we'll allow them to go to other countries because the drug companies have treated us very, very unfairly, and the rules and restrictions within our country have been absolutely atrocious. So we will allow them, with certain permissions, to go to other countries if they can buy them for 40, 50, 60 percent less. It's pretty pathetic, but that's the way it works. For many years, drug companies gave foreign countries better deals than they gave our own country. Now we're making sure that our great seniors share in the discounts given to other countries, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. Very importantly, Republican Party will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. That's the man right there. In my state of the Union Address, I asked Congress to pass legislation to protect American patients for too long. Surprise billings, which has been a tremendous problem in this country, has left some patients with thousands of dollars of unexpected and unjustified charges for services they did not know anything about, and sometimes services they did not have uh, any information on. They weren't told by the doctor. They weren't told by the hospitals and the areas they were going to. And they get what we call a surprise bill. Not a pleasant surprise, a very unpleasant surprise. So this must end. We're going to hold insurance companies and hospitals totally accountable. And we're joined today by families who have personally experienced some horrible injustices of surprise medical bills. Drew and Aaron Calver from Austin, Texas. Drew, I'd like you to maybe come up, and Aaron, to share your story. It's a pretty amazing story. Hi. Um, I have insurance, but was still stuck with a highly inflated medical bill. Uh, a lot of pain, um, stress, and fear with that bill looming over us. Uh, a highly inflated bill uh, it, that I shouldn't, shouldn't have to deal with. Uh, and uh, we. Uh, we hope that we, we support the president, that um, he'll take it. Um, the president's call to Congress to take action and support uh, pass and surprise billing, and also uh, create more transparency in terms of medical bills. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to explain what happened in your billing? 
Uh, because it was so sort of an incredible story. Yeah, I had a heart attack uh, two years ago and was driven to the nearest hospital. Uh, and although I had insurance, I was still billed $110,000. Uh, the, the hospital threatened to send my bill to collections. And so from there, uh, all that, that stress and the fact that it was highly inflated, uh, I was in shock when I found out some of the, the real prices, stuff I was charged for. Um, so I feel like I was exploited at my most vulnerable time in my life, just having suffered a heart attack. And so uh, I hope that Congress hears this call to take action, um, close the loophole, and surprise billing, and let's work towards uh, transparency the bills. You look very good now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. So when you got that second bill, you handled it, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. The yeah. heart was okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, luckily I made it through. And good. Yeah. And we, yeah. Good. We paid it. You don't want to run for president, that I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's bad. <laughs> but it is bad, and it's a shame. Also here with us today are Dr. Paul Davis and his daughter Liz from Finley, Ohio. Uh, Dr. Davis and Liz would like to tell you about their story. Hi, doctor. How are you? Thank you, Thank you please. Mr. President and honored guests, it's an honor for me to speak to you today. My family, like so many others, was victimized by a surprise medical bill. Uh, my daughter, Elizabeth, was charged $17,850 for a urine drug screen. Um, if anyone's interested, I have the bill. You may see it. <laughs> um, she had successful back surgery in Houston, Texas, and at a post-op visit, because she'd been given a prescription for a narcotic pain relief uh, that she used appropriately and as directed, he just said, oh, by the way, I would like to get a urine specimen. Fine. She did it. A year later, the bill showed up for $17,850. Um, this type of, you know, this, this test at best is worth $100. It's really, actually, you can get it for 10 or 20. Uh, and this type of billing is all too common, not just among dishonest providers. The problem of improper medical billing affects most those who can afford it least. We must put aside any other differences we have and work together to solve this problem. I am very pleased to see this issue being brought to the nation's attention, and I thank you. Thank you, Doctor. I see it. It's true. I, I sort of wanted to check it myself. It's, it's almost not believable. You look believable, but look <laughs> But he's right. $17,850 for a urine test. Now, the EOB says that they would have paid, if it was in network, $100.92. Wow. wow. Yeah. And that's still an ex inflated so price. So $100 and you paid $17,000. We settled for less, but I, I won't go how much less. But it was, it's a bizarre story. I'd love to tell you, but i told to keep it well, short. Well, it says it right here. <laughs> that's terrible. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You appreciate this Thank opportunity. It's a pretty amazing story. Glad I got to see that bill. I don't know. You're a very <laughs> believable looking guy. What do you think, Lamar? I think, I think, yeah, check it out. Lamar, check that out, please. That's pretty incredible. But there are many stories like that. I've heard them for years myself, friends, where they just come back and they get a bill that they can't understand it. And we're going to be announcing something, I think, over the next two weeks that's going to bring transparency to all of it. And I think, in a way, it's going to be. As important as a health care bill, it's going to be something really special. And we're doing a great health care bill if we get the Republican votes during the election in 2020. But with, this could be something that will have a tremendous impact, maybe a bigger impact than even a very good health care bill, uh, maybe even a bigger impact than when we took away the individual mandate from Obamacare. That was a big deal. But the numbers you're talking about through transparency are tremendous. It's the new thing. And we're going to be announcing it, I think, over the next two weeks. And it's going to be very comprehensive. We're also joined by Dr. Martin McCary, a top surgeon at Johns Hopkins University. That's a good place. Who has studied this issue closely. Dr. McCary, please come up. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Dr. How are you? Thank you. Great. Thank you. 
Mr. President, uh, thank you for listening to the real health care experts who are the patients and the doctors, not just the special interests. So thank you. When someone buys a car, they don't pay for the steering wheel separately from the spark plugs and the conveyor belt. But yet in health care, surprise bills and overpriced bills are now commonplace, and they're crushing everyday folks like these patients. People are getting hammered right now. When hospitals were built, they were built with a charter specifying, most of them, that they would be a safe haven or a place of refuge for the sick and injured, regardless, according to their charter, uh, regardless of race, ethnicity, or one's ability to pay. Yet today, surprise bills are hammering everyday Americans. They've done nothing wrong. They work and have a job, and they have insurance, and they're getting hammered. In my own profession of surgical oncology, we see now that half of women with stage 4 breast cancer report being harassed by medical bills. That's a disgrace to my specialty. That's a disgrace to the medical profession, and that's a disgrace to our country. We can do better. Hospitals and health care can get their act together to provide one honest and fair, transparent bill so we can restore medicine to its mission and finally stop the erosion of the public trust that we're seeing. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'll go a step further. No American mom or dad should lay awake at night worrying about the hidden fees or shocking, unexpected medical bills to come. Today, I'm announcing principles that should guide Congress in developing bipartisan legislation to end surprise medical billing. And these senators and congressmen and women that are with us today are really leading the charge, and I appreciate that they're all here. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. This is fantastic. And I think it's going to be a successful charge. From what I understand, we have bipartisan support, which is rather shocking. That means it's very important. That means it's very good, but uh, that's great. First, in emergency care situations, patients should never have to bear the burden of out-of-network costs they didn't agree to pay. So-called balanced billing should be prohibited for emergency care. Pretty simple. Second, when patients receive scheduled non-emergency care, they should be given a clear and honest bill up front. That means they must be given prices for all services and out-of-pocket payments for which they will be responsible. This will not just protect Americans from surprise charges. It will empower them to choose the best option at the lowest possible price. Third, patients should not receive surprise bills from out-of-network providers that they did not choose themselves. Very unfair. Fourth, legislation should protect patients without increasing federal health care expenditures. Additionally, any legislation should lead to greater competition, more choice — very important — and more health care freedom. We want patients to be in charge and in total control. And finally, in an effort to address surprise billing, what we do is all kinds of health insurance, large group, small group, individual markets, everything. We want everything included. No one in America should be bankrupted and unexpectedly by health care costs that are absolutely out of control. No family should be blindsided by outrageous medical bills, and we've gone a long way to stop that. I think next week we'll go even further, possibly the week after. It's being drawn now, but it's uh, one of the strongest things we've done as an administration. And I don't think any administration has done more. If we get this the way we want it over the next two weeks, I think you'll see something that's going to be great. Our initiative to end surprise medical billing is one of the many steps we're taking to fix our nation's broken health care system and to deliver better care with more choices at lower costs. My administration is eager to work with both parties in Congress to save American patients thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and to give American families greater peace of mind. They're surprised with these bills. It's ruined people's lives. They leave a hospital with something they think is going to be routine, and they end up in 
court, and they end up going to court, and then they end up with lawyers' bills that are bigger than anything they could have imagined. They get it from every side. We're not going to have that anymore. So today, I ask Democrats and Republicans to come together, to work together. Democrats and Republicans can do this, and I really think it's going to be something that will be acted on quickly. John, what do you think? Right? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Lamar, right? Mr. President, we'll be bringing you a bill, we believe, in July. Great. That'd be fantastic. Bipartisan. That'd be fantastic. We well, have great support in the White House, and we appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody for being here. And